Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode here in my series on preparing to pass the PL300 exam. Now, I'm Microsoft Power BI Data Analyst Associate Certification Exam. So before you start watching this video, make sure to go back and watch episode one if you are unfamiliar with the overall exam format, the exam experience, as well as what to expect from the style of questions and whether or not the exam is open book. So go ahead and check out that video and let's get started here today. All right, so if you have not already, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below so that you can stay up to date with all of us here at Pragmatic Works. So today, what I would like to do is I would like to talk to you about the first functional group that you need to prepare for, for that PL300 exam. Now, the first functional group is prepare the data, and it's quite a beast of a functional group. As you can see here on the slide, there are a lot of bullet points. These bullet points all relate to a skill that you are expected to understand, as well as be able to demonstrate in order to meet the objectives you see here get data from data sources, clean the data, transform and load the data. Now, I'm not gonna go over each one of these bullet points in this video, but I do have a nine hour prep course on our on-demand learning platform where I go through every single bullet point and I demonstrate a skill tied to the bullet point. So I walk you through the skill itself in the desktop as well as provide some additional information all to help you further prepare for that PL300 exam. What we're gonna do here today is we're gonna look at a couple of sample questions in the similar style format that you will see on the PL300 exam. Then we're gonna take a look at solving it in the desktop before looking at the correct answer here. So this goal, the goal of today is to help you prepare for that exam and seeing some possible questions. Now, the first question you see here is a sample question that I created with just some very simple dummy data. And so the question says, you are a data analyst working for a small business owner who just started an online boutique. The owner sent you an Excel workbook containing two sheets, week one sales and week two sales. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now the customer would like you to analyze her sales and she would like to analyze her sales for both weeks in a single table and a single query. What sequence of steps do you need to apply to meet this request? Now. This style of question is similar to one you will see on the PL300 exam in the sense that you may have a question where the answer choices are a set of steps or a sequence of steps. And there's more steps than you really need to correctly solve the question. And you may have to drag and drop those answer choices to the answer area in order to get the question correct. So pause this video if you need to read over the question, take a look at it, and think about those style of, uh, not only the style of question, but what the question is asking of you and think about the correct order. So not only do you need to understand this question, you need to make sure that you move those answer choices into the correct place. This is where taking your time and making sure you give yourself enough time is going to be key to getting this question fully correct to make sure you get the highest score you can possibly get and pass that PL300 exam. Let's take a look at our second question, then we're going to dive into the Power BI desktop. All right, let's take a look at question two here. Question two says, you are the HR director of a small company, and currently you have two Excel files containing employee information and emergency contacts. You need to combine the two queries into one, which answer below will meet the solution. So you can see there are two uh, uh, tables here within this workbook and this, these two sheets. We have employee and emergency contact. Uh, you can see the columns within, and this is a possible question type that you may see on the exam. You might be provided two images of two sheets, two tables, and you might have to determine what is the best way to satisfy the problem, meet the requirement that is being asked of you in that question. So pause the video here, take a look at these potential answer choices. All right, let's dive into the desktop and let's take a look at solving this here. So we're going to take a look at question one first now in the desktop. 
So question one is referring to that online sales boutique. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to get our data here. It's an Excel file. So I'm going to select that Excel workbook connector. I'm going to bring in that online boutique sales workbook that contains my data in both of those sheets. Now I'm going to bring that in and I need to make sure I select both of those sheets here in order to bring this in. And I know I need to do something to both of these sheets to combine them into one. I can't just load them into the desktop and snap my fingers and hope it happens. So we're going to select transform data, which is going to open the Power Query editor for us. Now I'm going to open the Power Query editor. Mine's opening up here on a different window. So I'm going to drag that over. Now you can see we have week one sales and week two sales. Now, what we need to do here in order to bring week two or week one together, in order to combine these, we need to append these two queries. Appending queries adds rows from one table to rows of another. Merging is going to merge columns from one table to columns of another. Append is the correct answer here. And if we tried to merge, I'll show you what will happen. If I select week one sales and then select merge queries, and then I try to merge these two queries together here, uh, no matter the join kind I pick, I'm going to run into some issues. And we can match up these columns here if we would like, um, but we're not gonna get the result that we want here. Um, so I can select okay, I can expand this out, and I can try to bring this in, but you're gonna see we're gonna get some funky result here. We don't have the data lined up the way we expected and we get all of these null values. That's not what we want here. So we're gonna delete those steps. We're going to return it to the state it was in when we first brought it in. And we're going to append week two into week one. So with week one sales selected this query, I'm just going to select append queries. And on table to append, I'm going to make sure I select not the current query that I'm on, but week two sales. And then I'm going to click OK. Now we've appended week two sales into week one. I can look at week two sales. I still only see week two, October 23rd to, through October 22nd. And I see in week one, all of those sales here. Now, before I'm ready to uh, bring this back into the desktop, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I tell Power Query not to bring week two sales back into the desktop because we've already appended it into week one sales into that query. So I wanna right click week two sales. I wanna uncheck enable load. That's telling Power Query, hey, we don't want to load this into the Power BI desktop. And the reason for that is it's already appended into week one sales. So we have both of those sales, weekly sales into weekly sales reports into one query here. So we can go in and rename week one sales if we would like to um, all week sales right now, if that's something we want to rename it to, to keep it simple. But then we would hit close and apply and we would then have that back into the Power BI desktop and then we could create a table and analyze our data all in one. All right, so the answer here for question one would be from the Power BI desktop to import the data from Excel. The next sequence of steps that we would wanna select and make sure we put in the correct order would be from the Power Query editor to append week one and week two sales. The third and final step that we would need to select here is to disable the loading of duplicated queries or unnecessary queries for us that would have been week to sales. Merging again would not give us the correct results and unpivoting the columns here would not allow us to bring sales from week one or week two into one query. That is only going to transform the particular query that we select on pivot all columns on. The second question that we're going to address is the question working for an HR company and we want to take a look at solving that question. How do we bring the data from employee info and emergency contact? How should we bring that into one query? What's the correct answer to solve this? Well, this is going to be another Excel workbook connector. So we need to select this here from this sheet. I'm gonna select employee info and emergency contacts here now, and then select open. As we bring this in here now, we are then going to select both, both the emergency contact sheet and the employee info. We wanna bring both of these in and again, we're applying transformations. So we need to go into the Power Query Editor. Let's select Transform Data. All right. Now here in the Power Query Editor, what we need to do is we need to merge these two together and we're gonna merge them on the matching key column employee ID. 
If I tried to append, let's say we'll start with employee uh, info here. If I select append queries and I select that emergency contact, you're going to see it's not going to combine all of the data from employee and emergency contact so that we have a unique row for every employee. Instead, we are going to get this funky result here where we're seeing nulls in our employee column. We're seeing nulls in emergency contact relationship and number. So that's not the correct solution. So let's delete append and let's go ahead and merge the data. So on that employee table, I want to go ahead and merge emergency contact into employee. So I'm going to select merge queries here now, and I'm going to select here the emergency contact table. Now, when you're merging two queries together, you need to match up a key column. This for us is going to be employee ID. So I'm going to hold down the control key, select employee ID from the employee table. Then I'm going to select employee ID from emergency contact. Now for us, we could change the join kind to inner only matching rows, but you can see left outer here is going to satisfy that requirement as well. And it's going to give us the same result. So we can just click OK here. Now, the final thing we need to do is to expand out this table and choose the columns we want to return. Employee ID is already on this table, so I'm going to uncheck employee ID. I'm going to uncheck use original column name as prefix, then click OK. Now you can see we have one query on this employee query showing us a unique row for each employee containing their name and ID, their emergency contact, relationship, and number. We could then go in and disable the loading of enable emergency contact, so uncheck enable load, and now we just have one query, one table with all of our information. So the correct answer here is going to be to merge the employee and emergency contact tables together. All right, everyone, that's it for episode two. Just a quick one here going over the merge and append queries objective. Now, this is a common one that's typically seen as a few questions on your PL300 exam. So I would definitely make sure that you know the difference between merging queries and appending queries. I would make sure that you know the necessary steps in the sequence of steps that you need to apply for those because you're not really sure what type of question you may see. You could see a straightforward multiple choice question where you just need to know whether a merge or append query is the option you need to apply, or it could be one of those build list reorder questions where you need to drag the correct sequence of steps over to the answer area in the correct order in order to get the question correct, to get full points for that question. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode here, the second episode in my series. Uh, drop a suggestion in the comments of what you would like to see next from one of the other functional groups, model the data, visualize and analyze the data, and deploy and maintain assets. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm looking forward to uh, adding to this series, and I hope you stay tuned. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.